What's up everyone, it's Connie with MoneyVest, so today it's going to be a little bit of an educational video, but also going over an analysis on Plug Power, which is down over 43% on the day. So a pretty significant collapse here, and uh, you know, it's kind of interesting because this reminds me of the 2019-2020 days, uh, you know, those are the good old times when there was a lot of quantitative easing. A lot of stocks were rallying left and right on the back of lower interest rates and a lot of hype that was built um, on a lot of lot of companies. And, uh, you know, over the years, we've kind of focused very much on higher quality, profitability, execution. Those are some of the things, the bedrock of the companies that we analyze. So in order for me to better help you understand, I'm going to go over one metric, only one thing, Okay. Because I know there's a lot of interest in, you know, some speculative companies that may not necessarily be profitable. And that's totally fine, okay? Because a lot of the times when you when you are looking for, let's say, 10 baggers or 100 Xers, you're going to find them in small cap, micro cap spaces where the market cap's really small and has a potential to 10X or 100X versus big tech, which is already established. So the gains may not be as much, but of course, they're going to be a lot more reliable versus something high risk, high reward like a plug power or something else. So the only thing I'm going to go over is one metric that you need to look at before you start even potentially investing in a speculative or a micro cap stock, which may not be profitable. That's exactly what I'm going to go over in this video. As always, if you enjoy it, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And uh, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. So this right here is uh, everything that you can access with our members-only benefits. You get access to over 40-plus private videos and members-only videos that I'm posting almost every day, every week. And you get access to all the spreadsheets. These are our intrinsic value spreadsheets, uh, S&P 500 valuation, our heat maps, our charts, volatility cheat sheets. Everything's going to be included. And also get access to our Discord channel, or trade alerts, over 20 private channels included. So all three benefits included with the link down below. If you join our Patreon, there is a 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. So if you move over to Plug Power, tanks 30% as the company warns it could run out of money in a year. And that's literally it. That's it. That's what we are here to discuss. This right here is the chart uh, down over 42, 43%, down to $3.40. And just the incredible sell-off from 80 bucks, it's down over 96% um, at the moment. So when, whenever you look at investing in, let's say, a company that's not profitable, right? For, for the longest time, I've mentioned this on the channel that, uh, first of all, uh, you know, if you can, always be looking at high-quality companies that have significant amount of cash with little to no debt and have excellent balance sheets. That's number one. That's a given, right? Profitability obviously being the key there because if the company is profitable, it tells us that it is self-sustaining, right? It is a viable, it is a validated business model where it can actually generate the cash flows and profitability to survive in the marketplace because it is mad out there. It is competitive out there. There's competition, there's threats, there's vulnerabilities, there's risk. There's just so much to worry about when investing in individual stocks that we have to look at companies that are generating some type of profitability or positive cash flows or at least have very strong balance sheets. Um, now, if you are looking at unprofitable businesses that may not necessarily be looking at profitability, at least in the next foreseeable future, then the one metric you need to really focus on is the cash burn rate. OK, um, it would be ideal if the company has a lot more cash than the debt. And we're talking very, very high numbers. So a simple example I can give you is Palantir. Palantir for the longest time did not generate profitability, but to compensate for that, they had some of the best balance sheets out there. They had so much cash, more than all of their liabilities. And I'm going to go over that example here in this video as well. But the cash burn rate basically tells you how many months the company has or how many months can the company survive with negative losses, with losses, right? How many months can the company go with losses and how many months can it survive with losses? That's a really, really important thing to know because Plug Power has a little bit over a year left. If they don't figure things out, they're going to run out of cash. And to go over that illustration, I'm going to go over this spreadsheet very quickly. Uh, this right here is the entire spreadsheet. And over here, you'll notice these are Plug Power's uh, numbers. So revenue, trailing 12-month revenue was $881 million. 
if you take a look at the cost of revenue, right, that, that in itself is a huge red flag, which is higher than the revenue itself. So the company is dealing with the negative gross margins. So $1.1 billion in cost of revenue, operating expenses, which includes your SG&A, R&D, all your marketing, salaries, wages, you know, research and development, everything is included here. We're looking at $600 million almost. So a deficit or surplus is nothing but an operating income or an operating loss. That's what we're looking at. And if the company has operating loss, that's when this analysis is going to be very, very helpful for you. It's going to be super useful to better understand how many months can the company survive with these operating losses, right? Given how much cash it has. So then we look at, okay, deficit or surplus. In this case, obviously there's an operating loss. In other words, a deficit of $900 million. And then the cash burn, this is the monthly cash burn. So we take this number and then we divide this by 12. Right, so we take this divided by 12, we get the monthly cash burn for the company. In this case, for Pluck Power, is just under 75 million dollars. And then we look at how much cash the company has, right? Cash on hand, and that's a little bit over a billion. So that's actually good, right? As of the most recent report, Pluck Power has over a billion dollars, but they're also burning through 75 million dollars every single month. So now, if you do the math, they've got a little over 14 months left before they will run out of money if the situation doesn't change. If they don't increase revenue and lower expenses, they will run out of money a little bit over uh, you know, 14 months. And that's how much cash they have. And, and if they continue to finance these burn, cash burn here of $74, $75 million per month, which is you know a little over $2 million a, year, a day, uh, they're going to run out of it in 14 months. Now, this right here is the same analysis, but for Palantir. Right. And Palantir, this is from last year, actually 2022. And this only applies to companies that are not profitable. I repeat, if the company is not profitable, only then you can apply this cash burn analysis. If the company is profitable, then you already have profits. You've already got a surplus over here and you've already got positive cash flows coming in. So we don't have to worry about how much company the ca is burning cash because they're making more than what they're burning, right? So in other words, they're making more profits and cash flows than what they're burning every month. So we don't have to worry about it. But if the company is not profitable, this analysis is essential. It is absolutely essential to better understand because it then kind of fits in the startup category and startups use cash burn rates uh, very frequently to better understand and help investors uh, understand how, much, how many months they really have. This is from 2022. Revenue for Palantir was a little over $1.9 billion. Cost of revenue is 408.5. Operating expenses were higher, $1.65 billion. And as a result, they were generating an operating loss or a deficit of $161 million. And the cash burn, which again is a monthly cash burn, was $13.4 million, right? And the cash on hand, Palantir had a significant amount of cash, $2.6 billion. So what's the difference here? The difference is that Palantir had a lot more cash on hand and a lot less in cash burn each month versus Plug Power had less than half the cash on hand and more than four times or five times, I should say, in monthly cash burn. And that's why they only had 14 months versus Palantir as of last year had close to 200 months that they could survive with this. Uh, 200 months ends up being... Gosh, I don't even know, like 5, uh, 10, 15, maybe 15, 18 years that they could have lasted the ca this cash uh, had they not generated a profit. But of course, they have now turned the corner towards profitability. So so we don't have to worry about it because now their operating expenses are lower, their revenue is higher, and this right here has turned into a surplus. So literally, I mean, when you are looking at a non-profitable company that is not generating any profit or cash flows, pull out your phone, look at their revenues, look at their gross profit, look at their operating expenses, look at their operating loss, divide that number by 12, and then take that number and then divide it by the amount of cash they have on the balance sheet. And that should tell you how many months they can survive with generating these types of losses. And if the number is like anything less than a year, I mean, that, that company is probably going to be in a lot of trouble. We did the same analysis for Tattooed Chef. I did this analysis, man, I did this analysis about a year ago. I think in 2022, sometime in the middle of 2022, I did that analysis for Tattooed Chef and how many months they have left. And well, get, tell you what, like, Eight months later, ten months later, they filed for bankruptcy, right? I mean, they're no longer even on the on the listing. Like they have gone pretty much to OTC markets and they're trading at, you know, about whatever. Yeah, it's pretty much gone down to zero. So it's very, very important to look at the cash burn rate for unprofitable companies um, that are not necessarily generating any type of positive cash flows or profitability. 
So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an understanding and is a little bit of educational. I know a lot of people already who watch the channel know about this uh, because, you know, our focus has very much been on quality companies, uh, higher quality businesses. That's why, you know, I do know that I get a lot of uh, comments on PayPal and Enphase. But one thing I can tell you is that Enphase, PayPal are not nowhere near close to those situations because they're profitable. They've got an excellent balance sheet, more cash than debt on the balance sheet, um, and they're and they're cash flows are positive, right? So yes, they may underperform on a growth basis and there's going to be some potential uh, downside here given how high interest rates are and the valuations are compressing down, but it's still high quality businesses. Fundamentally speaking, I do believe and I'm confident that these are still uh, great businesses, just obviously going through a very, very rough time in the last couple of years, especially for Enphase in the last one year has been pretty brutal, brutal down a little bit over 74% uh, of the last one year, of course, uh, down to 76 bucks. But very, very important if you're looking at unprofitable companies, speculative companies, the cash burn rate is essential analysis to conduct um, when looking at those businesses. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below. Don't forget, uh, you know, all the links are gonna be in the description. You get access to all the private videos, members only videos and spreadsheets and the Discord channels uh, as well. So as always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.